in the last video we have seen that there are three kinds of data dependencies read after write write after read and write after write data dependencies but among them read after write data dependency is the true data flow dependency here the programmer requires a data flow between the dependent instruction the instruction i2 is required to work on the data which is produced by the instruction i1 but if we consider the other two kinds of data dependencies here the programmer doesn't intend any kind of data flow between the dependent instructions the programmer need to keep the result of this computation on some register storage location and the name of the destination register used happened to be the name of the register used by the previous instruction similarly here the result of this computation should be kept on a register storage and the name of the destination register happened to be the name of the destination register used by some previous instruction so these are just name conflicts or name dependencies and hence they are false dependencies where read after write dependency is the true data flow dependency here the problem is occurred because of the name conflicts and hence called name dependencies in other words we can say here the problem occurs because the instructions i2 and i3 are reusing the registers or reusing the register name here the register r2 is reused here the register r1 is reused and that register reuse is leading to these issues so why program have to reuse the registers because of the availability of only a limited number of registers usually the instruction set architecture provide a limited number of registers with which the program should be built up but these are just register names in other words we can call these as logical registers for each logical register there exists one physical register which is the actual physical storage location or the actual register location for each logical register there exists one physical register storage or physical register the program will be built up using the logical registers and while the program is under execution or while the instructions are under execution these logical registers will be mapped to their corresponding physical registers and in fact there can be more physical registers or more register storage available then why are we limiting the number of logical registers with which the program has to be built up this will reduce the number of bits required for the operands within the instruction which will in turn reduce the number of bits required for the instruction thereby it will reduce the code size so this has advantages but on the other hand it leads to the register reuse and reusing the registers will never create any issue if the instructions are executed according to the program order but if some out of order execution is possible for example here if i2 executes before i1 or if i3 executes before i1 and i2 in such cases it can lead to some incorrect situations the solutions that we have discussed so far especially operand forwarding is used for solving the problem of read after write data hazard for write after read and write after write hazard register renaming is the solution used since here the problem is caused just because of this name conflict and since we have more physical registers or more temporary registers available with us renaming the register can help to solve this problem no need of even unnecessarily stalling the pipeline 
Consider this example with write after write data dependency. Here instruction I3 is reusing the register name R1. Now instead of using the same register name R1, if we rename the register name R1 to the temporary register T1, now the result of this computation will move to the physical storage corresponding to T1. So R1 is renamed to T1. Let this be the initial contents of R4 and R5. The result of this computation will move to the physical storage corresponding to T1. Now when I1 execute after I3, let this be the initial content of current content of R2 and R3. The result of this computation will move to the physical location corresponding to R1. So the data moves to a different storage location and hence it is not overwritten. So the two copies of the location maintain an old value and a new value. So for all the reads preceding this write, so for all the reads before this write should be provided with the old value 6 and for all the reads after this write should be provided with the new value 9. Thus, we should maintain proper in mapping information that register R1 is renamed to the temporary register T1 and also proper measures should be taken to provide the old value for all the reads preceding this write and for providing the new value for all the reads after this write. And finally, usually if instructions are executed out of order, even then, in such architecture, the instruction commits according to the program order. So when instruction commits according to the program order, we can replace the content of this physical register with the content of the temporary register and the temporary registers can be freed. Now consider this example of write after read data dependency. Suppose the initial value of or the current value of R2 be 2. Now, if instruction I2 executes before instruction I1, the result of this computation will overwrite this value 2. As a result, I1 will read a wrong value or the updated value from the register R2. Here the problem occurs because the name of the destination register used here happened to be the same name of the register used by this previous instruction. So if we rename the register R2 here to the temporary register T2, now the result of this computation will move to the physical storage corresponding to the temporary register T2. As a result, we are having both the old value and new value with us. Now if instruction I1 executes, it will read the old value itself from the register R2. And finally, when our instruction commits according to the program order and when I2 commits, we can replace the content 2 with the content of the temporary register T2 so that for all the writes following, for all the reads following this write, they can read the value 9 from the register R2. The Sopran forwarding is the solution used for solving read after write data hazard and for write after read and write after write data hazard, register renaming is the common method used and this is just a brief overview of the concept of register renaming.